Hey guys, I've been seeing a lot of people ask recently kind of the same questions here and there about how to change their appearance, how to change their risen, and though we do have video tutorials, I figured I'll do like an example video explaining a little bit of how what works and showing off each step along the way. Not too too like drastically, but we'll go from High Scepter to Shield Sage. We'll change our appearance to something else and maybe one of our pawns as well. So we'll get started here. Like usual, if you need to set up the game, we have our channel. I've gone over it a few times. There's a written guide. There are video guides by me and Rift. If you're using the pre-build, this is what you'll use. If you are using Visual Studio, I have this separate video here that is outdated currently. But the first five minutes of it do explain how to set up Visual Studio. So you'll want to watch that and just follow those steps once you already have the game. And this will get your server up and running and you can go ahead and start adjusting things. So just going over this really quickly because I'm not going to be setting up the game. I'm just going to be changing the Arisen appearance and equipment. But yeah, that's about it. Links for this will be in the same places as always in the about section on the Zool channel itself and a link to the secondary discord for the tables and IDs are also located in the same channel here. Just scroll down. So we'll get started. For myself and those using Visual Studio, you'll have a folder like this. You'll want to navigate to your assets, which I do already have located on the sidebar, but we'll do here. Debug. I believe the pre-build is uh, released, but it's the same exact thing if you think about it. Go into your assets and you'll find your CSVs. Open up an Excel reader, Google Sheets, Excel itself, and just open it up here and you'll have all these listings. Our first section is our class and level. It's pretty self-explanatory what is what. The classes grow from 1 to 11. For your skills, if you are using a newer version and Visual Studio, you will not need to adjust your skills. You could have 1 through 4, 1 through 8, does not matter since you can change it in-game, which is a lot easier. But for those who do need to change their skills because they're using the pre-build, you can go ahead and open up this Google Sheet, find the class you're playing, and copy the ID in decimal. Why in decimal? Just read this and you'll know why. So, we've gotten our class change to Shield Sage. I have it as five because that's what it is. My level is 120, that is fine. Skills, like I said, do not matter because we'll be doing it in-game. Here we have our abilities section for abilities as well. We do have another sheet. Click it open and you'll get a breakdown of name, Japanese name if you need it, the hex we do no longer use, use decimal, and a quick description of what each passive does. These are passives, essentially. For Shield Sage itself, I have already changed these ahead of time. Sorry about that, but just know that these are magic damage, magic damage on HP, and then further magic damage from a healer, and then further along here we have uh, blow power from the hunter skill. So you can see here that if I type control F and put 361, collapsing strength, increased blow power. I only know that because I changed it, but any ability here you can look up and find that it's there. So that is our ability section. There are 10, you can fill all 10 or you can just fill a few. The primary attack, defense, MDEF, all this, leave them as is. If you are changing your class, you will need to change your primary weapon. If your class has a secondary, such as Shield Sage and Fighter, additionally you will want to change your secondary weapon to something appropriate. If you don't know where to find tables for this, if you download that zip file from before, you'll have everything in these folders. You can just open the one you need. If you're playing Seeker, you could open Seeker Daggers. We're playing Shield Sage, so we have our shields here. 19813. Here's 19813, so that's where I got that number for those looking for this. Currently, if you want to lower your stats but do not understand how the game works per se, in terms of scaling, I would just leave the ensemble body as is, because that's what's currently equipped. But if you want to lower your stats, I would suggest in the multi-class to just use an ensemble as well. 
because it's just the easiest way to go down. Find something your level or a level you want to be like 80, copy paste it in here and you'll have those stats. Same for your pawns as well, I also recommend using ensembles for simplicity. Further along we're going down, you want to add a lantern, obviously <laughs> if you want to see in the dark, but the main section we want to be changing is our visual section. V primary, V color, V secondary, V color. This is where you'll be changing your appearance. That's why I look like this. I have the stats of a level 80 piece, but I am wearing level 1 armor because it looks good, which is pretty interesting in that aspect, but your head, your body, clothing, arm, including all the colors. Colors go from three to eight, I believe. Blue, red, pink, orange, yada yada. Heading further down, you anything that's white you just want to leave as is, so I'll slowly be just skipping over it. This end section over here with strength, down power, shake power, guts, and all your resistances will be pretty high downloading the game as is. If you don't know what's what, you can leave them, I suppose, but if you want to make the game harder, just copy these, I guess. And it's this is balanced for uh, balance. This is made for level 90. It's not really balanced, but that's what it's made for. Including the resistances. Typically you have zero resist, but I do not know what putting zero will do, so I have it only as one for now. And that's pretty much your risen. You can see here that five, seven will have all this junk, and I do have it downloaded ahead of time just for it to be nicer. This is the same thing as that, so don't assume it's any different. We'll replace our CSV, exit to the main title, and when we come back in, we'll be a Shield Sage. So for our pawns, here's our Shield Sage. For pawns, it's pretty similar. Initially, you'll start off with 300 pawns. Again, you'll simply just copy my pawn CSV, drag it into here, and insert it so you can start adjusting it. For downloading it, if you needed it, you can just uh, hover download, hover CSV, and then navigate against the same folder, click the option, and then save it. That's how you would do it. So, for the pawns, we'll head and game for this. But we'll quickly go over this while we're loading in. We have our three pawn names. You want to change the names from whatever it is to what you want. Primary and secondary, again, like the player, if you are changing the class, you'll need to change the weapon. We'll quickly summon these guys and gals. There's the same three you see in every video I have, right? So there they are. Again, they currently have an ensemble for the body like I mentioned in the other Arisen section. Just change it to something around your level. These are, again, level 80 equipments with the 90 secondary. Just for lowered stats, you want to give them a lantern. And then to change your appearance, equipment, it's just like the player. Go to the visuals, add in what you want. You'll have your big tables of what you're looking for. You want hunter armor, just pop it up, find what you want, copy paste it in. It's really that simple and then you download it. So hopefully that's self-explanatory enough. We'll keep on going through. Ignore the visuals, equipment, accessories, excuse me. Ignore the job items because most likely you're not going to be using a hunter. For pawn skills. It's all located here. They only have four. Again, if you have that sheet open, this is abilities, excuse me. You'll see here I have at the end section their job, which is their class. So one of them is a seeker. Here's my seeker table. I'll scroll back down. Custom skill 212. So it's easy kill, you can see here. And that's pretty much how you'll do it. Just like the player, you'll do the pawns one by one. If you're using a 
T slash P skill, their level needs to be 1. If you're using a normal skill, just leave it as 10 and they'll be doing fair damage, I'd say. Pawn abilities, you don't want to change. There's a lot of problems with changing these things. You probably won't even get into the game, so just leave them as is, unfortunately. And then leave their level, but change the job to whatever you want. Again, if you change the job, change the equipment. Further down, we do have our appearance section. Appearance is done a little bit differently, so for now I'll ignore it and we'll go on to the room. Again, here we have our room. You would just copy it over and you have this giant list. Teleport to the room just to show it off. And you have three Magagoras, which are basically pets and Didon. You can name them whatever you want, give them the colors. This information, again, is in the same location as the other ones. You can just open up furniture. You have all your furniture, your pets, whatnot. It's all the same. So if you can change one, you can change the rest. Really, it's really all it boils down to. You can see my room real quick. Very nice. So now we'll get into our appearance. For appearance, you can stay logged into the game, just return to the title. You'll need, for the Arisen, a DB browser, which is linked here. Like I mentioned in the past, just download it. And we'll first create our character. I'm be going from female to male, just for this tutorial. Excuse me. Create a character. Here in our character creator, if you already have a preset, you can load it. If not, you can create it. On mail, let's go with that. You'll name your character because you have to. And then from there, you'll just hit OK. Edit. Any class. Doesn't matter. Start the game. Upon finishing the character and watching the intro cutscene, you'll get kicked over to the tutorial area. Currently the tutorial is not able to be completed. You can see I'm wearing the gear from the first character. It's just fine. All this area is completely empty, so don't really go through it. There's no point. Just exit and return to the title. If you wanted to, you could simply just play this character. But if you play this character, as I've mentioned in the past, you cannot use pawns, so we'll be replacing the original with the appearance of this one and then giving the appearance of this one to a pawn just so you can do both in one. For the Arisen, like I mentioned, you'll use your browser, open up your database, so just go to Rebuzz, Dragon's Dogma Online, CLI, Bin, Debug, .NET, Files. Instead of assets, you'll enter database db v1 sqli open that up browse your data click on account go to character and you'll just highlight the character you want to be copy it paste it then you'll write your changes exit and re-enter and you'll have the appearance So now when you log in, you'll be able to play the one you want and have the ability to access pawns. So now that we've changed our character, we'll change our pawn, which is done differently, like I said, unfortunately. You'll want to go into your pawn section, your pawn CSV, excuse me, and you'll open it up by editing it with Notepad Plus or any other notepad you wish to use. You cannot use Google Sheets right now because you'll be entering each value one by one which is kind of annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. So what you would do normally is copy this, paste it somewhere in Discord where you'll be able to quickly find it, and then once you have this giant garbled mess, you'll copy it from this first number, which is your sex, you know, copy it to this last number. So we'll copy this. You can ignore the name and the creation date, which is this first section. 
and we'll go back into our CSV, match the section together so we can start copying over. You can see it's here. It's easy to find because it's always two small numbers and then a large number. You can highlight all that and then paste. Once you are here, you just want to delete the space, add a comma, and then do the same thing. So I just did a little macro. You'll pretty much just do that the entire way through. Until you reach the sex again. So now we have this section all copied through. You'll save it, and now we'll enter the game. So once we load back in game, we'll immediately see that our appearance has still changed from the past. Female to back to male. Load up our first pawn, and our first pawn is now the appearance we had previously. So that's how you would do it. Just do it for all three pawns, and do what you want at that point. The last thing we're going to go over is enemies. Recently I did release what I have for myself in terms of like playing. So if you go to the Zool channel in the same Deed on Discord and just check the pins, jump to it, you can just download this and you'll have enemies located sporadically around the game. If you don't know where they're at, go to the Zool channel and all these videos you see more than likely have an enemy that is on the list. So if you see a video you think is cool or an enemy you think is interesting like for example let's see Cursed Dragon right? You can just see it says Protectors Retreat in the video. He climbs this little cliff so we'll go ahead and do the same. We'll teleport to Protectors Retreat Now that we've arrived at Protector's Retreat, just like in the video, we'll not get lost because we're pros and champs. Climb up this hill. Climb up the second one because there's two. <laughs> Feels bad. And we'll run on over. See our little white dot that indicates there's an enemy there. And there you go. There's Cursed Dragon. Just like in the video. So, for a rule of thumb, if you find anything interesting on this channel, you can fight it. That's just how that works. If there is something you want to add manually, say you think Cursed Dragon is a weird addition to have in this area because it just doesn't make sense to you. And you want something else. A transition. There is a tool released by Lathe which is located here in the same channel as the rest of everything else. It's a spawner tool, which I do have already downloaded. He does have a rank guide on his page. Just follow that and I'll teach you how to do that. Open it up. You'll receive all these messages. Well, there's no messages now. Run it. If you see no field found for a stage ID, or you're seeing enemy won't be found on map, won't be shown on map, whatnot. These are because enemies are in dungeons. So they cannot be displayed on this. We'll expand the window for a second. Head over to where we're at, which is Findom, Season 2. Scroll down to this spawn because we think it's weird, we don't like Cursed Dragon. Erase that. And we'll put... Let's see, what do we put? I guess it does not matter. We'll put a red cap. We'll make the red cap level 120. Make him a thousand percent bigger. Give him a boss chip gauge. BGM that he won't have. And to save it, like before, navigate to the path that you've already had. Hopefully do it correctly, unlike me. <sighs> Shit, I hate when I do this.
Same thing, bin, CLI, bin, assets, debug, files, arisen. And we'll change it to enemy spawns. We'll save that, hit yes. You'll have your window here saying it's saving. It says it's unknown because these are, again, in dungeons, not in the overworld. So they cannot be displayed here. We'll run back to the area prior. Load it in, running along the path. There he is. Track him like usual. <laughs> I don't even think I can kill this guy. Or he can hit me. Enchant party. Oh. Alright, I did not change my skills. But yeah, so anyway, that's how that works. So quickly, before the video ends, we're gonna go over the skills. I've shut it off many times before, but somehow, perhaps, maybe people just don't know how it works still. We'll return to White Dragon. Once you arrive in White Dragon, walk or teleport to the relay station. Either method is fine. You walk over to the vocation job master, arch support, arch ball. You cannot change vocations in game, but you cannot you can now change skills if you're using the newer version. So just pick what you want. Add it to whatever slot. P or T does not matter. You'll see once we're out again, our abilities did change. We have Rampart Raid, like listed before, Force Shield, and whatnot. So yeah. Hopefully this makes sense to those who watched. If it did not make sense, you can go ahead and ask questions in the Dedon Discord in general. As long as your question is not like, where game, game don't work, somebody will most likely answer you. If you need a resource of some kind, Look through each Discord if possible. Use the search feature on Discord that comes naturally. A good resource that we have. If you want to know what skills and abilities do, you can open up this Google Doc. It's been posted by many people many times. And with this Google Doc, it has written description of what each ability does in the game. Skill, not ability, excuse me. So if you're playing Spirit Lancer, for example, and you didn't know what Orum Feng did, you can read it. Reading is hard, but it must be done sometimes. This is what Arm Fang is, this is what it does, this is what each level changes, and yada yada yada. So, there's this resource if you need it. Find it. Any questions again, don't ask me, ask somebody else, like always. And see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Quick, quick little addition something I forgot that's actually very important. If you're playing the game and you are changing your stuff, normally when you turn off your server, it will reset, which you really don't want. So if you go into your CLI folder, bin, debug, .net, and then go into files, you'll find this aerogene dedon jfig, jfig, <laughs> config.json. So just open it up, Again, with Notepad, Notepad Plus, doesn't matter. Scroll down to the very bottom, where it says Wipe on Startup. You want, it will initially be true, you want to change it to False. By changing it to False, the game, the server will not reset itself and delete all your changes. But, on that note, back up all your changes. For me, I have different folders for each class I want to play whenever I want. So like you saw, I was Shield Sage. If I want it to be Seeker, I can just copy it, paste it, replace, open the game. 
will actually open the server first and then open the game. Once we're logged in, there you go, I'm a seal stage, or seeker, fucking hell. Yep, that's all I wanted to mention. Again, thank you for watching. If you finished all the way, cool. If you have any questions, yep, you know what to do. Bye.